Welcome to this episode on the Health and Happiness Show, where it's my mission to change your mindset so that you can live a healthy and happier life. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Let's go. Hey guys, it's Ollie here with a special edition on the Health and Happiness Show, where today I am joined by Academy student, Connell Kelly. I first got to know this man or should I say this man first got to know me from my order in my favorite Thai takeaway. This is where I first got to connect with Connell before having the opportunity to work with him over the last three months since he started on the Health and Happiness Academy. To be honest, it has been my biggest blessing getting to know this gentleman over the last few months and actually seeing him progress, getting to learn of his story and actually witness his progression through the academy has just been the biggest opportunity for myself. And uh, he's not just a client, but he is now a friend. So Connor, without further ado, I welcome and introduce you to the show. How are you today? Very well. Thank you very much. What a lovely introduction. Thank you very much. Nope. It is my pleasure. I want to kick this off by diving deep into a topic that means a lot to you. uh, That is mental health in the hospitality industry. Perhaps you could give us a brief background into your hospitality experience and how perhaps your eyes have been opened uh, into the mental health aspect. Yeah. Well, I mean, the hospitality industry is... It's the third largest sector in the UK economy for employment and for GDP. Um, and I've noticed over the, the course of my kind of career that there has been a distinct lack of support and help with the problems that arise when you do work in, in the hospitality industry and the toll it takes on your mental health. Um, I know I've suffered as a result um, and... You know, there's very few people that I know that, that have worked in, in the industry that that have kind of, that they haven't experienced one form of mental health problem, uh, whether they acknowledged it or not, uh, over, over witnessing in my career. Um, so, I mean, it, it's something that definitely needs highlighted. It's something that definitely needs to be talked about. And in general, mental health does need talked about. Um, but especially, I feel, in the mental health sector or in the hospitality sector. So give us a, an insight into, you know, you said there's a lack of support there and, and maybe help, you know, mm-hmm. could you define that for us? You know, mental health is such a, almost an umbrella term. Um, what is it in terms of support and help that you feel is missing in that hospitality sector? It's, it's recognition and support at the, at the same time. So, there, there's a lot of a concern about running the business as a business, as in making money <clears throat> and notoriety. And because there's so much competition, being better than your competition, being better than the restaurant next door. Um, there's also a high level of stress within that job, within being a restaurateur and working in a restaurant. It's a, it's a high stress environment. Um, it leads to a lot of problems It leads to a lot of issues. They're not being addressed simply because I feel it's just, it's seen as a level below the the primary goal of making it a successful business, making money. Um, And because it kind of can be so cutthroat, I don't think people are willing to acknowledge it fully because it'll be to the, they believe anyway, it'll be to the detriment of the business. So, yeah, I think, I think this is, I think this is a challenge, right? Because I say this as a business owner and it's a challenge where every business survives on generating an income we're generating money into the business um and i think there's a challenge in business of looking at right are we chasing are chasing the almost but in the in the sense of so in the hospitality um is are we chasing our vision and are we chasing our dream or are we chasing the profit and are we chasing the money and i think that's the that's the challenge because i think we can be a visionary we can have all of these ideas and all this aspiration in business uh, to, to make an impact, to help people um, and to follow our, our passion at the end of the day. But, you know, passion and profit 
you know, it's a, it's a slide in, it's a slide in line in the sense of, you know, knowing what to, what to pursue. And, and I say that that is one of the challenges of business. So as someone who has, you know, I know Connell, you know, you've worked up into the managerial level, you know, having seen and, and, and had that experience, maybe what is the change you would like to see then understanding that actually the business does need to make money, but also knowing that actually all businesses, I would argue, start off with some level of dream, with some level of vision, with some level of passion. You know, it's a fine line, but what is that change you would like to see maybe within, you know, people over profit? Yeah, <clears throat> I think the passion that people use in order to create and run a successful business and the focus and the determination that it needs and the, the time and the effort that it needs <clears throat> needs to be shared with their staff's mental health and recognition of it. And I mean, all aspects of a business need concentration, you know, human resources and the finance side of things and the buying and the spending, the profit and loss side of things, they all require, you know, a, a lot of passion, and a lot of in-depth knowledge and to a certain extent, a lot of money needs to be spent on, on certain systems and operations in order to make them work properly and work them best for the business. There's a lot of business owners that don't take a lot to do with their, their financial, financial reporting because they give it to their accountants to do. Um, and they pay their accounts a lot of money to take care of it. So the recognition that needs to be seen is that businesses need to start putting that kind of effort into looking after their, their staff's well-being and mental health. Um, and it's very easy for a lot of businesses and business owners, managers indeed even, to say, well, you know what, it's just, you know, they'll take advantage or uh, they'll, they need to deal with it themselves or I'm not their parents. You know, they can do, they have to figure out. But you know, to a certain extent, a lot of people do need to take responsibility for their own mental health. And I'll talk about that at the end. And that's not me being cruel or anything. It's just being realistic. Um, and at the end of the day, ultimately, is the best way to deal with, with mental health issues, as far as I can see. But, uh, yeah, I think there definitely needs to be a lot more concentration on if that work is causing a stressor or causing anxiety or causing depression or, or discomfort in it, of any kind, kind that's creating mental health problems for your staff, it needs to be recognized and dealt with um, from a ground level and built up. And it needs to be, you need, you need to be made aware of that from the very beginning when you're setting up a business. How do you think business owners should and could um, take on that recognition in terms of, you know, it's, it, it's, employee welfare and well-being um should be at, at the forefront you know at the end of the day it's it's your employees who are running your business and they should be at the highest level of care and support but clearly that's a miss clearly that isn't the case and how would you therefore like to see it you know uh, a change in how businesses work in terms of that employee you know that employee self and structure right so you're onto a payroll but you're also onto a support role in the sense of would you like to see you know um you know practitioners coming in to the, the business ecosystem and working alongside you working with you would you like to see just more one-to-one -one time with the management level or the 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 business owner level like what is that that recognition and that support that you as someone who has and does work in the hospitality industry would like to, to see in terms of that level of support. Yeah, I think, I mean, it goes for, for different levels, obviously with companies that have your know, franchised and they have more employees, um, you know, their, their, their methods are going to be a little bit more widespread than, than local family owned businesses or independent businesses. When you look at what I think is the biggest, the biggest problem, it would be ineffective management. And that's not just time management, like fair rotors and breaks at the right time and consistent breaks and making sure you do get breaks, which doesn't happen. But I think there has to be a bit more confidence put in a manager's ability to 
listen to a member of staff and deal with a, a problem if it needs to come along. There needs to be methods put in place where staff feel like, you know, they they do have a, a an outlet for any kind of problems that they're having, any kind of stress that they're having. Um, and I think it needs to start with the, the management level because there's so much stress and pressure heaped on managers themselves. I mean, the biggest stress that I got was when I was a manager. Um, and honestly, you know, trying to be responsible to that and making sure that you know that if you're going to approach a manager, they're going to do it with impartiality and they're going to do it with a little bit of compassion. Um, and you don't have to fear about what that honesty will do to affect your job and your role. Um, I, I think that's that's the big thing that needs to happen, really. I think company culture is is a term that, like, certainly as a as a as a small business owner, is something that I aspire to create one day within my own business. Um, and actually seeing, you know, and and seeing and practicing the value within uh, your team, you know, what would company culture look like for you? So, you know, you've recognised right, we need more recognition within our staff, within our employees. We need to look out for their uh, mental well-being, not only to create a good mental health, but also for actually probably retention of those staff as well. Um, what would the ideal company culture look like for you, having having gone through the the, the ladder of working up the ranks, you know, and and now in a position where you've had this experience? What would that ideal company culture look like for you if you were given the advice to a business owner right now in the hospitality sector? What would that advice be? Be fair to your employees' needs. You know, at the end of the day, going into hospitality, you know, 74% of, of abuse being taken by staff or hospitality workers comes from customers. Now, there's a saying, or a few sayings, in fact, that go around saying the customer's always right. The customer is king. Um, and there's a place for those in, in hospitality. There really is, because at the end of the day, you, you know, hospitality is that, is that word. It's got hospital in it, because you're there to, to, from your own goodwill, take care of someone. So you do need to take care of your customer. But that doesn't mean that whenever a customer makes uh, an employee feel uncomfortable or starts treating an employee unfairly, that you automatically write it off simply because they're the one paying the money. There needs to be an attitude change towards, you know, how, how much tolerance is given towards that kind of thing. Um, and, you know, that's not just for customers either. That goes for other staff members as well. Um, you know, there there always is a big kind of void between front of house and back of house in a lot of restaurants where the kitchen always has a go at the, the floor staff and the floor staff always has a go at the kitchen. There's this kind of discrepancy, you know. They're doing two different, diff, very different jobs at the end of the day. Um, and the communication between those needs to be completely spot on. You have to understand that you're working in a high-pressured environment you know, not only mentally, but physically, you're, there's a deadline, you know, there's a steep learning curve, there's physical heat from a kitchen or from heat lights and, and that kind of thing. It all raises the kind of, uh, the atmosphere that you will get, um, you know, in stressful situations will arise. Um, you need to recognize that as an employer, you need to understand that when the, when you're bringing in policies, to deal with these kind of things, it has to be complete zero tolerance. Um, I, it may be a worry that it's to the detriment of the business, but at the end of the day, if you start running your staff into the ground or you don't take care of your staff, they're, they're not going to be coming efficient. They're not going to be the best that they can be. You know, their training will go completely out the window and you'll find that that's the biggest detriment that you'll have to your business. People will take care of people, you know, and, you know, the policies that you kind of need to put in place are, is everything that needs to take into account the needs of your staff within reason, obviously. I mean, you still have to run your business, but make sure they get breaks. Make it your policy that if they need to talk to someone, they have availability to do so, you know, whether it be coming to a manager or be coming to 
someone in their HR department or even an outside line, there are services available that you can avail of, you know. That that all has to be taken into consideration because for far too long it's been recognized that people that work in the hospitality the hospitality industry on the lower rung of the ladder are disposable. Um and that's part of the problem. You know, you're you're constantly made to feel like you don't have any control over it. You might get your rota a day before it's supposed to be you know, you're you're supposed to know when you're supposed to work. Um and things like that would make it would it would it would damage a person's self esteem or a, a person's worth in their work. So, you know, concentrating on on making sure that your staff know that they're worth and how, you know, how much you can help them and help them do their job more effectively and better. That needs to be concentrated on. Let's play a scenario. Let's say I'm in the restaurant and I'm that customer. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> I am being, you know, verbally quite abusive towards you and it's unacceptable. They're not aware of it. They are just reacting in the moment. Maybe there's something wrong with their dinner, right? A, how do you respond to that? And B, how do you cope with that? Because at the end of the day, you're on the front line of that abuse, not the chefs, not the business owner. How do you deal with that? And, and, and because here's the thing, like, I would imagine that can be quite hard to deal with sometimes. And actually it's not nice. And that's not a nice part of your job. How do you deal with that? That is, that comes down to judgment. So essentially when you're serving a table, you're going to be judged and the the table that you're serving, you're judging them. That's just what we do as human beings. When you get a negative response like that, now if I'm the waiter, if I'm the server, I'm not the manager, I immediately, I immediately would say to my, my manager or the person in authority, the supervisor, whoever's running the shift at that point. Because at the end of the day, what they should ultimately do is say, okay, well, it's probably best we don't go near that table again or you don't go near that table again. We'll see someone else can serve them or perhaps I will serve them as the manager. But if it is something that really is rubbing you up the wrong way and you don't have the opportunity, you, you have to go and take some time to yourself and, and realize that in that atmosphere, in that time, there's so many different factors that, could, that can kick you off and put you in a really, really vulnerable, bad position. Um, if a customer says something really bad, it would be a case of, well, Maybe you've got another 10 things in your head that you have to do. Maybe it's just too hot or too warm. Maybe you didn't get your your break or your toilet break when you needed it. Maybe there's something else that you need to do. So my advice to a staff member would be go and sit down for 10 minutes. Just gather your thoughts. Look at your phone for a minute. Just take some time to yourself. And then I would I would deal with the, uh, the, uh, the customer separately uh, in a way that's they didn't feel as though that they were being put upon uh, or they were being criticized themselves, but just to figure out if there was a problem, what was the problem and can it be rectified in some way? You know, I want to get back to a word that you used previously. And I think this is absolutely key. I think this is key in and outside of the workplace and that's communication. How would you recommend that we communicate better between our team, between our staff, between our customers and just between, you know, whether they're colleagues or friends, what are some of the communication maybe keys or practices that you you'd use to ensure that there's no reaction and actually that it's thinking before we speak in and actually that what we say uh, is going to only have a positive consequence and um, to ensure that there's that effective maybe management leadership, um, communication between the front staff, you know, the front of house, the back end. What are some of those communication, maybe skills, practice languages that you'd use within that workplace and outside as well? It's awareness more than anything else. Before you go into that, you know, as a manager looking at the the, the busy uh, restaurant floor, you do have to be aware of every single thing that's going on. So that just doesn't mean how long that table's been waiting for food or when they're going to leave so another table can be sat. But that's also how your staff are performing. Are they doing their job, first of all? Are they doing their job effectively? And what their mood is as well. Always keep on top of asking how your staff are 
always keep checking if they're okay, if they need any support with anything. And this is something I learned quite relatively recently. It's something that I always knew, but I never heard it out loud. But as a manager, you're there as support. Um, and that kind of changed a lot for me when, whenever I, I started managing more because previously the idea would be if you're lower down the ladder, you're supporting your manager, you're supporting this person do the, run, the, run the place effectively. But essentially as a manager, you're supporting your staff so they can go and do the job properly, so they can go and take orders properly, so they can go and, and communicate something special about an order to the, the kitchen so the kitchen can ultimately get the food out properly to the customer. So you're in the, you're in the supportive role there. And, you know, as well as being aware of where your staff are at and where their headspace is at, also make sure that you're there to take care of them effectively doing their job properly. Because at the end of the day, that will build up a lot of trust. If they think that you can do your job properly and run the place properly, the job that you're paid for, it's more than likely that they will find it easier to come to you and confide in you things that are on their mind or things that they know you can deal with if it's bugging you because you're competent. So how does that trust get formed? Because, you know, it, it, there, there can be an element of, you know, feeling quite daunting, you know, certainly if someone's new into the workplace, you know, how, how, how does that trust get built between the, you know, the waiter, the waitress and the manager? And um, my second question, which we can come back to, uh, would be, okay, so you're supporting the, the people below you, your team, your staff, who's supporting you at yep. that level? So there are my two questions. Okay, well, the, the trust thing, first of all, that all starts with training as far as I'm concerned, recruitment and training. So when you're bringing anyone into the company, first of all, you know, you, you basically lay out the terms of how they work. Um, make them feel at home and give them a, an idea of what it is that they're going to be working. There's far too many times I've been in businesses where a staff member has come in and it's just not for them. They might be a great waiter, but the actual atmosphere and that particular restaurant may not be the right fit for them. So it all starts with that kind of recruitment at the start and then that training. Um, especially when you're training younger people who have less experience and a little bit more, uh, they're a little bit more wet behind the ears. Uh, and something like pouring a pint can be quite daunting to them. Now, if you ever learn how to pour, pour a pint, number one, it takes 10 seconds to learn how to pour a pint. It's one of the easiest jobs to do, but it's also one of the more fulfilling jobs because everyone needs one everyone gets one and it's it's going to be a, a staple part of working behind a bar for example um if you can lead staff through tasks like that and encourage them to do things better uh, and encourage them to win more with those little jobs you can build up trust that way at the end of the day it's a very social atmosphere that you're working in so it, you know at the same time get to know your staff um on an appropriate level obviously um i think you know chatting to them and kind of getting to know them that even follows even to working your your shift you know before they start their shift ask them how they're doing and that kind of thing but if you build that kind of thing up over time and with your training and again it comes back to competency if you can show them that you can do the job effectively and that you're willing to do the job then they can do the job um, and and that, that kind of builds up the trust that, that, that you need in your staff. How do you practice leadership as a manager? So we've spoken about trust, communication. Um, how do you practice leadership? How do you be... How do you become the person who is leading by example? Which you, which was what you were just touching on there. And, and, and what came to mind there was... You know, I, I've worked from the bottom in my career. I was the one wiping the sweat off the treadmills. Yeah. And one of the reasons why, I res you know, when I was working in the gym, I respected my gym manager working there as a PT was I saw her down on the hands and knees wiping down the sweat on the treadmills. And you're never too good to do any of these, you know, um, <laughs> you know, entry level jobs, should we say. 
Um, how and, and I would say that's an example of of true leadership is leading by example, not being the dictator. Um, how would you practice leadership, and what maybe would you like to see be more apparent in uh, the the hospitality industry when it comes to leadership? It's easier said than done, but a higher level of emotional intelligence is needed with that kind of thing. Um, so you have to be in control and you have to be in control of the chaos. And believe me, that's not hyperbole. It's chaos. It is. Um, a lot of the times, you know, the, the duck analogy where everything's swimming nice and calm on top but underneath the, the feet are pedaling really, really madly. That is a restaurant in a nutshell. And, you know, it doesn't matter how many Michelin stars you have. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much fast food you sell. It's all, it all, it all is the same. It's about controlling that chaos and keeping a level head in it and making sure that whenever you, you do have to give out, tasks or whenever you have to lead properly that it's done with the correct mind you're not clouded over you've got the right judgment um you know you can handle the 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 flood of emotions that you're going to get by putting people in different sections and i don't like that section well i want more tables or am i not good enough for this or you know you you have to deal with a, a lot of mixed emotions from a lot of different people for a lot of different reasons and leading them it requires you to kind of step back from that and stop being a friend at that point in time not being an enemy but being uh, an impartial um kind of single-minded person where you where the, everything that you do is is done for the needs of the business now as far as I'm concerned, business needs involve staff. So looking after your staff makes, means you look after your business needs. Um, and that's kind of how, that's, that's how you work your leadership. That's how I do it anyway. Yeah, I try and practice a wee bit of stoicism. I try and practice a little bit of making sure that, you know, before, before the madness hits, that everyone is good to go. Everyone's ready. If you don't have something, let's go get it. Let's figure it out. Or if you can't get it, let's figure another way around it. Um, because if you have that foresight of being able to see what problems are going to occur over the, the night, you're going to run out of this dish, you're going to run out of this, you're not going to have enough seats for this, you're going to get hammered at this particular half hour slot. You know, if you, can, if you can do that, then you can lead properly. It takes all that time away from you worrying where you can go ahead and, and use it to effectively lead people. You know, it's so interesting because, you know, as I sit here as the interviewer, like, you know, the reason why I love conversations like this is because of the perspective that you get from it. And I would walk into a restaurant, be seated, order off the menu, enjoy some lovely food, pay the bill and then leave. And, and you just, and it's the same I would imagine in any industry is that level of perspective that you get when you actually, you know, when you're actually seeing what goes on behind the scenes and, and, you know, so I can tell you now that there's a level of respect from, from me to you right now, because, you know, we don't see as the customer, we don't see what goes on um, and all of the hard work that goes into all the little things. So, but adding to perspective, perspective is also an element of mindset. And I want to dig into the manager's mindset. I want to dig into the mindset that you've accumulated and acquired for your experience and your skill acquisition over the years that you've been in the hospitality sector. What is the mindset that you approach your work today? And maybe what would be some of the starting points um, that the employee listening to this now in the hospitality sector can implement today to improve their mindset? I understand that you're significant. That was a big thing for me um, because I'd worked in bars, pubs, coffee shops um, and never really in big high class establishments, you know, biggest, a significant kind of high, all the awards on the door, everyone's talking about it around town. Um, and you kind of, you imagine that when you work in those places that you have uh, a notoriety because the place itself has a notoriety but even if you work in somewhere like 
a fast food joint or a coffee shop no matter if it is part of a, a larger group or if it is independent uh, and local um you do have a significance and you do have a power to influence someone's day um certainly when i worked for coffee shops when we opened in the morning like the the first person that people going to work would see that day would be you um and if you showed up with a foul attitude you're sending that person off on their day you're starting that person off on their day on a foul attitude and you know coming from someone who also is on the other side of the counter a lot i know for myself that if i encounter that it can be difficult to shake and that leaves a bad taste in the customer's mouth as well but it's you know you go into a management mindset knowing how significant you are because you're taking care of people you're looking after people you're providing them with a, a brilliant experience and at the end of the day you know if you get to charm them so much that they write a good review about you or they leave a good tip bonus absolute bonus um you know you, the level of different customers that that i've encountered over the, the last couple of years there are people who you know, <laughs> dining, we could go on about how people dine and different types of diners and different experiences that you, that you meet, but that's for a different podcast, I reckon. But, um, you know, there you, you can get single mums that come in from the rain with a pram and the kids screaming and, you know, they're, they're just, they're looking to calm down for five minutes, you know, or you get the, the, the lawyer or the, the office worker who's just been, you know, rat out by their boss and completely destroyed for losing something or doing something wrong or, you know, botching a job or something. And they're just looking for five minutes to collect their thoughts. Um, um, and it, it's, it's quite empowering to know that you have the ability to make them better or make them feel a wee bit better even if it's for half an hour while they enjoy a hot chocolate or a coffee or a sandwich or whatever it is that, the, that you're selling. Go in with that mindset and knowing that you can empower someone and you can help someone. That just improves everything tenfold. You know, it just, it makes you think you're not just there to earn money and you're not just there to pay the bills. Uh, you're there to fulfill yourself by helping other people, which is a great feeling. You know, guys, like, this is all legit. This isn't just words. This is action that I've seen and witnessed. You know, I got to know Connell by going in to a takeaway probably too much, <laughs> enjoying the <laughs> food way too much. But I was then, and at this point, I didn't even know this man's name. Like I was blown away by his level of customer service and level of customer care. Nothing was too big of an ask, and he would always go above and beyond to so the point to where one day, I just felt compelled to essentially leave a review and get in touch with, with sort of a uh, head office and just say, are you aware of the work, the good work that this man is doing? And I don't know where that went and I didn't do it for anything in return, but I ha it had to be recognized. And, you know, recognition is a word we, we, we've come to a number of times during this podcast. And, you know, certainly the change having spoken to you today, Connor, that I hope to see happen is that recognition um, because, we're all working hard, whether regardless of what job, regardless of which sector we're in, we're all working hard and everyone deserves for their hard work to be recognized. And maybe, maybe just maybe if it was, then, um, you know, there would be a greater level of retention uh, in employee care and actually, most importantly, in our mental health. Connor, before I ask my last question, where can the listeners find out more about you? Well, I'm on Instagram. Marvelous 1983. Um, but I also do a podcast about movies called the Film Connection Podcast. Um, and you can find it there. It's on Instagram, it's on iTunes and Spotify. Uh, and it'll be on SoundCloud very, very soon. So um, you can find the Film Connection Podcast uh, on any of, those, uh, any of those avenues. Connell, what is the one change 
that you would like to see within the hospitality sector that will have the greatest impact on our mental health and happiness? One thing, huh? One thing. Mm. That is a tough one to reduce it down to one particular thing. Um, but I, I, I think what would be pretty significant is if we started finding a way to change everyone's attitude towards hospitality and towards hospitality workers. Um, and when I talk there about the significance that, you know, you should feel yourself if you're, if you are a hospitality worker, I think if we can try and find a way to communicate that to other people so that they can understand that and therefore kind of give a wee bit more respect to people who work in that industry and a wee bit more understanding as to the the daily grind as it were to a lot of a lot of that work i think that would do a huge amount to improve um you know your, your i mean you'll get better feedback from customers which you know is pretty much the bread and butter of a lot of uh, a lot of hospitality jobs so i think if you start changing that attitude in the general public um i think that would that would have a huge a huge impact i think that's a very good answer guys thank you so much for listening connell thank you for your time and until next time stay healthy be happy take care thank you